Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. Greetings, and thank you for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. Today, I am so happy to have as my guest, Dr. Amy Harris Nguyen, who is a Psych D double board certified in integrative and interventional psychology. She's an entrepreneur, author, speaker, and she's concerned um, in integrative health and believes in a holistic approach, treating both the body and the mind. And she is involved with a successful wellness practice called Integrative and Functional Health and Wellness. And she's going to speak to us today about stress and an integrative way to approach it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Amy. Ellen, it's my great pleasure to be here. I appreciate the invitation. Now, one thing I'd love you to share with us, and we'll repeat it again, and we'll have it posted on the website. What is the best way for people to find out more about you and your work? Oh, I appreciate it. They can visit us online at the com. Again, the com. That's the uh, the shorthand for our practice name. And they can call us at 630-980-1400. Excellent. So let's go back in time, Dr. Amy. And what made you go into this field as a profession? You know, I was a high school athlete. I've been an athlete all my life. Um, and I played varsity softball. And I was batting a remarkable 800. And uh, my coach said, Oh, my God, Amy, you're batting 800. I'm like, what does that mean? She's like, Well, that's unheard of. And as soon as she said that I went into a batting slump. <laughs> and so the performance pressure was overwhelming. And so luckily, our assistant coach was the psychology teacher at the time. And she gave me an article on reframing negative self-talk because I realized every time I got up to bat, I was saying, oh, my gosh, don't strike out, don't strike out, don't strike out. And then, of course, I would strike out. So she's like, Amy, you got to change your self-talk. When you get up to bat, focus on something positive, say, have fun, get a hit. And I did that. And within two, three games, I was out of my batting slump and I had a remarkable season. And, and teenagers were kind of grandiose. So here I am thinking, wow, if I can do something like that on a small scale. Imagine what we can do on a large scale if I learn more about psychology and the principles of the mind. And so um, the next year came around, I was a senior, I took our psychology class. And from that point on, I was hooked like a fish, never looked back. So that's really inspirational. Through a a personal challenge and a personal triumph, you Mm -hmm. found your way to what you wanted to do with your life, which is a big question for a lot of teenagers. (laughs) I feel remarkably fortunate. Especially, I would say, right now. Um, You know, with what we've been going through with lockdowns and not being able to complete, let's say, high school, you know, that that really Mm -hmm. important last year of life. What have you seen going on with um, people of that age and all ages because of the increased stress this year? Oh, my gosh, the stress has been incredible. I've seen a lot of children and adolescents, certainly adults, too. uh, Levels of depression and anxiety have skyrocketed. In fact, depression, you know, has has for many years been the number one cause of disability in this country. And now more than ever, we're seeing that in exponential increases among our youth. Uh, There's certainly been an increase in youth suicide. There's certainly been an increase in suicide among uh, military veterans. We're seeing, sadly, more domestic violence. We're seeing more child abuse. So the lockdowns, you know, although I understand the public policy, they have done anything but help people stay safe in a broader sense because uh, the increase in mental health issues, the increased divorce, the increase in physical illness. So it's been very, very detrimental, sadly. And this is where people need the most help. Uh, Because we're still experiencing lockdowns in many areas of the country, and the effects will be lingering for a long time. That is so true. Well, I live here in Florida, 
where there's no such thing as a lockdown. But you luck out. <laughs> I know. But one of the reasons, you know, but but of course we, we're encouraged for self care. You know, yeah. like nobody tells you you can't wear a mask and wash your hands. And, and you don't have to go down to South Beach. You know, so they do put out public service announcements about making safer personal choices. But one of the reasons they went out of lockdown is one of the things they found is what you just shared, Dr. Amy. And we're talking today with Dr. Amy Harris, new one, Psych D, and um, a brilliant doctor who really found her way early in life and has done so much to help people. You could find her at the CIF hw.com and we'll have that listed on our archives one thing they found is is what you said about some of the social workers when we were in lockdown initially Mm -hmm. you know they couldn't do the home visits in those homes that children are at risk of abuse with you know abusive parents i have to say usually fathers but could be mothers too (laughs) and they weren't doing the home visits they were just checking in by phone but you can't see you know a child shaking in the corner when you're talking to the parent no no he says everything's fine so it was really really i would say like you said in an overall public health sense not really so helpful no, it's very detrimental, very detrimental. And I, I'm so glad that states such as Florida are realizing the need to return to a, a better, healthier level of normas, normalcy. That's, that's incredible. There's no substitute for that. Right. None. But, you know, but just to position that in terms of seeing hikes in viral infection. So, you know, it's a balancing act. It's very it difficult. Is, it, It absolutely is. But as you know, there are fantastic uh, treatments for COVID-19 and there have been since prior to the start of the pandemic. Uh, We, you know, at our practice, you know, we've been using uh, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D, elderberry, um, fantastic, you know, medical interventions early on. So it's really about you know, maintaining a healthy lifestyle. A big part of that is maintaining, you know, and managing your stress uh, because it is certainly, you know, we can't deny, you know, the, the risk of that, but there are certainly, you know, very reasonable things you can do to mitigate that and stay healthy as well. I am so happy you brought that up because of course, as a holistic health provider, I'm always in the literature as well. And there is so much substantiation about what you just said, Oh, absolutely. I might. Yeah. Zinc, vitamin C, and vitamin D, and elderberry all have been tested in COVID. There's actual yes. literature about it. Absolutely. So why absolutely. isn't that on the news every day? They can hand out the <laughs> vaccinations and write at the vaccination sites. Everybody should get a bottle of all these things, which are cheap. That's right. Well, that's why <laughs> there's not a lot of money to be made. <laughs> I mean, there is, but there's a lot more money in pharmaceuticals. But, oh, you know, that's probably for a different show. <laughs> right. But it is stunning. I mean, I, I don't understand why. And, and many doctors like yourself and myself who do start, you know, promoting, just telling people the truth about the studies, mm-hmm. not even that we're selling them. I don't. Oh, yeah, um, Absolutely. And there's a repression about sharing this information. For sure. If you want the truth, go to go to some really good peer reviewed journals. You know, last last April, April of 2020, I was, uh, you know, doing webinars on COVID-19 and I was, you know, citing research from the Journal of Virology that, you know, unequivocally demonstrated just how quickly and effectively natural stem cells when taken um intravenously, for example, could, you know, turn around people, you know, on their deathbed within one to three days, um, because it, it stops the cytokine storm, and it, it opens up the airways. And, and certainly treatments of albuterol, you know, that old school, uh, you know, medication for uh, asthma, <laughs> puffs over one or two days, and boom, People are recovering like new. So there have been all kinds of treatments. You know, it, 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 people are going to, you know, seek some of the truth. Go to some of the peer review journals, you know, uh, is check in with sources that aren't, oh gosh, dare I say, affiliated with the government or big or big pharma or big medicine. Uh, you're more likely to get an accurate picture. That's but so that's true. 
Yeah, it's raising people's stress, you know, right? Stress is off, it's off the hook. So, you know, that's a big thing to say, what is stress? Because we'll let you share from, from your um, perspective what it is. But isn't it different for everyone? Because me, myself, I have to say, like, I don't get stressed. I don't know, you know. People that's go, awesome. what, you're dealing with that? And I go, <laughs> I don't know. What, what I find is I actually have this um, filter on my view of the world. I, as mm-hmm. I think I was born with it. It's something I would say very Buddhist. Um, awesome. I only know that after I'm 70 years old, you know, lots of years of study, that I really awesome. don't get too emotionally involved in anything. Yeah, I no, just I think feel like awesome. I'm watch. It's not, I don't know if it's awesome because you lose out on some of, what, you know, the drama that some people feel, but I think it is healthy though. I, I absolutely agree. You know, that's many would say that's the highest form of intelligence is being able to observe, the, the, you know, be an observer. You know, it's funny. I love that, you know, you've got that that Buddhist perspective. I, I was uh, out not too long ago and I saw a shirt I, and I'll quote, you just Buddha said, you just got to let that go. What's <laughs> what end quote. So stress, it's 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 interesting. Stress actually is a physiological response. It's our body's response to a challenge, a demand, or a threat. And in short bursts, it can be really positive, you know, if it could cause us to take action, if we've got to flee from a dangerous situation, if we've got to study for an exam, you know, if we're getting ready for an interview, but prolonged stress, that's where it can really undermine our physical, emotional, and, you know, spiritual functioning. And there are different types of stress, too. You know, um, I like to say, to keep it easy, there's three types of stress. There's physical stress, that's your falls, your injuries, your, you know, your poor sleep, your poor appetite. Then we've got mental and emotional stress, friends, family, finances, politics, you know, all the BS. And then we've got chemical stress. That's what we're eating, what we're drinking, what we're breathing in. And some people, such as yourself, such as myself, we're a little bit more, I don't want to say we're impervious to stress, but I think we have a better way of dealing with it. And one of the best ways to deal with it, as as you've been doing now, maybe your whole life, is to be somewhat detached to realize what things you can and can't control and to let go of those things you can't. And certainly for most people, I think that's easier said than done. But I would agree with you, you know, certainly I, I, I have never found myself overwhelmed or anxious, you know, this past year in terms of, you know, the pandemic, and I've just been kind of observing and watching. And um, that's something I think is really, really helpful. Because at the end of the day, the things that we can control are threefold, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. And one of the best ways, you know, I've learned over the years to manage and and mitigate stress is I, 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 I practice not watching the news. I'll stay informed. You know, I'm an avid reader. I'll stay informed, but I'm not going to be inundated with the news because the news primarily is, is not accurate. And, but it's, it's driven to sensationalize things and that exponentially increases people's stress. And then when people are stressed and anxious, they're very easy to influence, sadly. Right. That, that's a step you can take. And that's true. I love that saying, and it is an old one about, you know, may I deal with those things I can change and change them mm-hmm. and change them, you know, right and, and, and certainly diet and exercise. Oh, you know? absolutely. I mean, I always ask my clients when they say, well, it's too hard for me to eat healthy because of some reason. But I go, you know, who puts your, the food in your mouth? Mm-hmm. You know, it's really self-determined. It, it, it very much is. It's interesting, though, stress will trigger sweet cravings and salty cravings. But if you can manage to choose healthy foods, even just for a few days, those cravings will pass. I know some of my best stress busting foods, um, because foods really do affect your moods. Um, Kimchi, sweet potatoes, broccoli, uh, blueberries, fatty fish, shellfish, eggs, organ meats, um, chamomile tea, those kind of things actually reduce stress. They reduce oxidative stress you know, in our body and they reduce mental and physical uh, and emotional stress as well. So foods affect your moods. Well, you threw out a word there and you and I know what it is. And there's some in my refrigerator, but let's share what kimchi is with our listening mm. audience if they don't know. <laughs> 
Mm, Ellen, you take this one. It's definitely one of my favorite fermented foods. Um, although I'm new, I'm kind of new to kimchi. And at first it was like, you know, overwhelmingly spicy. And I'm, I'm sniffing, I'm wiping my eyes. You know, I'm from the Midwest. So we, you know, a lot of us here don't do spicy very well. But kimchi is fantastic, you know, as you can probably speak to, you know, more of that. Well, it's a fermented cabbage, and it's really, if you think of where is your grandmother from, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and obviously, uh, Dr. Amy's grandmother is, you know, probably not from an Asian country. Um, but if, if you do have a grandmother from an Asian country, particularly Korea, they will probably have instituted kimchi as an everyday kind of food. It's a fermented cabbage. But if we think of it from an Eastern European perspective, then we're talking sauerkraut. Yeah, absolutely. And I grew up eating a lot of sauerkraut. I didn't really care for it, (laughs) but I ate a lot of it. Well, I have some of that because what I do is I use that, like even if I'm having scrambled eggs or Mm -hmm. something in the morning, I'll just put a little like tablespoon of it there as a condiment because what that does, and you know, everything is such a round circle. It comes back in terms of health and wellness and dealing Mm -hmm. with stress. A lot of it has to do with our microbiome. I'm so glad you said that. You know, for those of you who aren't familiar, but you probably are listening to the show, um, that is our, our, our gut environment, our bacteria. And that plays a huge role. So our the health of our gut, you know, it's known, our gut is known as our second brain, as you may know. And that really is the major driving force of our health. It controls our life, including our mental health. People really don't understand the 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 body mind connection the gut health connection to you know mental emotional stress mental and emotional illness physical illness you clean up your gut you'll absolutely clean up your body you'll clean up your mind you'll clean up your relationships not even kidding you because right isn't it amazing because those microorganisms have their own consciousness and mm-hmm. release chemicals into our body that influence just what you're talking about your ability to handle stress your mm-hmm. mood and, and people when they realize that they're kind of freaked out it's like a yeah. lot of us live here it's like we you know rather than me Okay. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, when when people ask what's what's the best way to deal with stress, I would say, you know, come back to the fundamentals of taking care of your body. Healthy food, that's foods that, you know, elevate your mood, foods that help you to have a clean gut and, you know, um, foods that, you know, help increase mental clarity. So healthy food for sure. Have a really good sleep routine, what we call sleep hygiene, exercise, move your body, whatever it is, you know, it doesn't have to be at the gym, but something that's keeping you involved. Because here's the thing, when you take a fundamentally healthy lifestyle approach, you're going to manage those mental and emotional stressors so much more effectively. We're all going to have stress, you know, stress doesn't end until we die. Um, But there are things that you can do to manage it so much, uh, so much more so than maybe you've given yourself credit for by just focusing on the fundamentals. Well, let me ask you, where is your clinic located? We are in the northwest suburbs of Chicago, and it's uh, it's kind of cool. I, I'm very honored, and, and I feel very privileged to work with clients locally, nationally, as well as internationally. We we do a lot of telehealth. We have people come from different states, different countries, um, because we really focus on taking a holistic approach, much like you do in your practice, Ellen, where we're going to integrate body and mind um, interventions. Because here's the truth. Most people, if they've been dealing with something, just say, you know, mentally or emotionally for a while, maybe it's depression, maybe it's anxiety, you know, maybe it's chronic work stress, it's going to affect your body. And vice versa, if somebody's been dealing with a chronic issue physically, it's absolutely going to affect them mentally and emotionally. And if you only address one part of the equation, then you can't really heal the whole of the person. So it really is about taking this integrative holistic approach. And, you know, as the old Chinese proverb says, there's many roads to the top of the mountain. So it's about identifying, you know, taking, you know, the holistic, you know, view of someone, their, their, their lifestyle, their, their body, their relationships, you know, their family history, their early childhood history, understanding the wholeness of that person and then working collaboratively and figuring out a plan of action. 
And, you know, everything's a double-edged sword because, of course, you know, COVID, et cetera. But it has done a very positive thing in terms of expanding access to telehealth and mm-hmm. making the world a much smaller place in terms of being able to access from anywhere um, a provider such as yourself. Like, it doesn't even matter if they're not in Chicago anymore. Isn't that just been a blessing? You know, when I look at it, you know, to your to your broader point, there have been many blessings, you know, that have come out of of, of COVID and the pandemic. And a big part of that is telehealth because they're they're been people that have been shut in for years, even decades, you know, and, and as you said, you know, people that, you know, haven't had access to services or resources. So that's been a huge blessing. Really has. It really has. Um, you know, for my daughter, who's not someone who can get around, you know, she's somebody who's um, has various challenges and it's been wonderful for her to have visits right you know that she feels like she's really being supported by her providers and with on a big screen you know with a zoom Mm -hmm. meeting or something it's it's really done a lot to expand health care so tell us about your center it's obviously not only you what other Mm -hmm. kind of things do you offer there well, thank you for asking. You know, I, I, like I said, I'm really honored and privileged to be a part of such a fantastic treatment team. So we, uh, we offer um, f- traditional family medicine. We do integrative medicine. Uh, we do functional medicine. And functional medicine, uh, as you know, it, it looks to understand the root cause of disease, symptoms, or illness and reverse it uh, naturally through healthy lifestyle interventions. Certainly cleaning up your gut is a big part of that. So we do psychology, psychiatry. We offer hypnosis, including past life regression hypnosis. We offer radiation. Reiki, chiropractic, uh, acupuncture, needleless acupuncture, uh, yoga training. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, yeah, so pretty integrative. Uh, we offer stem cell treatment. So we do regenerative medicine. We offer a fantastic treatment called transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS. Uh, we do IV ketamine infusions here, um, IV nutrient therapy. So it's, it's, it's just, it's grown organically over the years. Uh, you know, when I, when I launched this practice in, I think, early 2012, we were just doing, um, psychology counseling and we had a part-time holistic psychiatrist. And, uh, you know, it's, it's grown pretty nicely over the years. We certainly do bioidentical hormone replacements, um, Lots of really cool things, big emphasis on nutrient therapy, and that's, you know, really identifying where your body is depleted uh, nutritionally, as well as looking, you know, if there are other problems with being able to convert hormones. And so we have found that our nutrient therapy uh, has better outcomes and is much safer than traditional psychiatry, although we certainly do, you know, some traditional psychiatry here as well. Isn't that fantastic? I worked at a clinic that sounds very similar to um, what your clinic has evolved into, only it was in the 1980s, and I was the head nurse for 20 years. Oh, my God, Ellen, that's impressive. Yeah, at the Corsella Center for Complementary Medicine, and we had Mm. two very large offices. One was in Manhattan, right next to Carnegie Hall, and the other Mm -hmm. was on Long Island, and we did every single one of those therapeutics. Wonderful. Oh, my God, that's fantastic. So they're not new. Um, no, but, no, not but, at all. But we thought that that would be by this time what would be considered just good conventional medicine because it works. You would think. And then yeah. you can all we don't throw out drugs and surgery. That would be once in a blue moon, almost never. And certainly not to deal with any kind of ongoing uh, type of health issue because it does, no. drug therapies not only don't work, they really make things worse. They do. Uh, they absolutely do. That was one of the big, uh, that was a big impetus for my focus on functional and integrative medicine was, you know, my partner was diagnosed with, you know, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which turned into, you know, thyroid cancer, which then turned into chronic fatigue. And it just devastated her life. It devastated our relationship. And and my mom then, you know, had 
some chronic illness that we started to turn around naturally uh, and then had uh, had a situation and then went downhill from there because she was grossly over medicated and ultimately died as a result of that. So in chronic situations, conventional medical interventions, you know, uh, you know, actually exacerbate uh, situations. It, we, Western medicine is great for an acute situation. Maybe you have a heart attack or get in a car accident or you've got an acute infection. It can save your life, but for a chronic condition, if you're only being offered a pill or a surgery, you're absolutely putting yourself at much higher risk because it it just doesn't work. It it makes things worse. It's so sad. Like my own mom, who's 92, um, no prescription medications, Ah, not one, not one. But she's on lots of nutrients Mm -hmm. and she is still having a very minor health challenges with very minor arthritis. I wrote a book called Arthritis, written 16 books. But she wow, also, congrats. well, yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, she <laughs> also, you know, has some memory loss. Mm-hmm. But in general, physically, she's in fantastic shape. Wow. When I see the others like her on 15 meds, it's, it's oh, great. yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, that's the average person over 60 is, is prescribed 26 medications per year. I know. That's criminal, criminal. If someone, if a healthcare worker does come and work with my mom, they always say, okay, so what meds are, are you on? And when she doesn't know, they come to me and say, you know, I think she's not remembering what meds she's on. Could you tell me she said she's on none? I said, no, that's correct. None. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wonderful. It's all the kimchi. <laughs> you know, it's just not heard of, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Just yeah. ridiculous. So it's wonderful that you have that center. I'm familiar with all those interventions. And like you said, Dr. Amy, at this point in time, so much of that is well documented in mainstream medical oh, literature. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it should be standard of practice across the board because it's actually less expensive in the mm-hmm. long run. It's mm-hmm. not sometimes for the individual because it's not covered by insurance. But if we look at societal mm-hmm. expense, it's actually much less expensive to use oh. herbs and vitamins than a drug. Absolutely. And you make an excellent point. It it may be a short term investment for the individual, but it will pay big dividends. You know, a lot of times when I'm doing a consultation, I will ask, you know, how's this affected you, uh, you know, in in, occupationally or in school? How's it affected you emotionally? How's it affected you physically? How much has it cost you financially? Because a lot of people don't realize it has cost them thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, I, I interviewed, you know, a gentleman a couple weeks ago for a consultation for uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation. I said, how much do you think your depression and anxiety has cost you over the years? And he said, it's cost me several million dollars because it caused him to divorce and he lost, you know, more than half his assets. And so we're talking about an intervention that could, that changes lives, saves marriages, saves jobs. But a lot of people get stuck and they, they, you know, well, wait, they don't wait, understand. Amy. Dr. Amy, I have to shut you up there because we are out of time. But thank you so much for being our guest. And thank thank you, you. listeners, for listening to Herbally Yours on 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College in Garden City, New York. Um, For further information, you can email us at whpc at ncc.edu and you can find this show on our archive and click to get in touch with Dr. Amy. And I am your host, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us next week for another edition of Herbally Yours. Until then, stay healthy. Stay healthy.